Hello YouTube, it is time to fit the diff in my Fiesta, I can't wait. Alright, so as you can see we got the Kaz LSD to wear my Fiesta and this is the Super Q version. It's got WDP or WPC treatment to the plates, go lock it up, but it's the better version. Um, I've also got new bearings doing the end of the diff. We've got new seals for the gearbox seals, drive shaft seals, new bolts as well. We've got some shim um, for the diff, diff bearings. We'll get into that later. I want to give a big thanks to Park Box. They gave me the best price I could find anywhere on this diff. So I'm going to put a link in the description to Park Box. Go check them out. You can find anything you want for your car, any modified parts, standard parts, you name it. They got it. Check the description below. Give them a click. Right, so the main thing is with this video, <clears throat> it's not going to be a full instructional video on taking the gearbox out, putting the gearbox in. The main thing I'm going to concentrate on is getting the diff in the gearbox. So actually getting it out to the car, I'm not going to document everything. The video will be too long. So it's just going to be a case of me showing you little bits along the way. But uh, the exciting bit you're going to see. And I'm also going to look into, as I said, the shims, which is bearing preload. We'll talk about that more later when we get into it. But for now, I'm going to start stripping some parts off the car. And I'll show you little bits as I'm going along, as I'm getting the gearbox out. All right, so here's where we're at. Car's up in the air. Stripped out the filter, battery, uh, light. Done all of that before I jack the car up. Now, I've got the gearbox oil draining. Uh, next thing's going to be then is uh, pop the drive shafts. Drop the ball joints out and gearbox mount and then start taking things apart. Intake pipe, assume that's going to come off. Uh, we see how it goes yet, so we're uh, making some progress. Right, so I'm at that stage now where it's ready to come out. I've just tied it off up there to give me a little bit of assistance in dropping it down. I've got jack under there, axle stand under the engine. Um, we're going to pry them off because all the bolts are out and I say hopefully it should come off the spline now and come out so let's hope it goes smooth. Right, dropped a bit quicker than I expected there, but I'm hanging now on this, as you can see, so as I leave this go, sorry, as I leave that go now, we can get more drop on it. Right, so still partially got it on this. Seems just laying him down. I've got to watch he doesn't get, knock the axle stand over. Right, I'm going to pull him over. Work smarter than harder. You know what? We do. Right, success it is out. Happy with that. It's not easy when you're on your own. But what I'm going to do now, next stage will be getting the shed, start opening it up. <sighs> right, so the gearbox back up there, give it a clean. It's the diff, that's been in the freezer, it's cold, shrink it, I'm going to quickly go and get the bearings because they've been in the oven, drop one over. There you go. Tapped him with a bit of PVC. Actually, once it was striped, that one right on nice and easy. One more in the oven, quickly going to go and get that one. Don't forget my glove. Ha <laughs> ha. 
that's how we should go on. You see that? Just dropped straight on now and did. Didn't even have to touch it. Beautiful Bernie. Right, so I actually didn't explain that. I jumped straight into that and didn't tell it was the next day. I ended up playing too much flight simulator yesterday, so we'll come to an end. But the gearbox is back out there. Like I said, I give her a wipe over. In the meantime, while that's just drying off, and so bearings on there. That was easier than uh, I was uh, expecting. So, just in case of part in the box now, so we get our bat on the bench, start opening him up. So with the box this way up, we've got a rim of uh, bolts all the way around we've got to take out. So I'm going to take out them first, flip it over, and then there's some from the inside, and we can put the two parts open. Now the one main thing to say, this is not a how-to. This is just you watching how I'm going to do it. So if you see something I do wrong, just don't worry about it. As long as it's not a major issue, if I do, I don't know. But anyway, it's not a how-to. Just watch me and see how it goes. Right, so inside I've already took the slave cylinder out. That's that part there. So in here we've got one, two, three, four. I think that's it. Four bolts. And then we should be able to part it. Ta-da! It's half a gearbox, Amelia. Mm. Right, so this is what the inside of the gearbox looks like. Of course, you will know it already, but that is the differential. That's what we're popping out and swapping. So I quickly want to explain to you the most complicated part about fitting a diff is to do with the bearing preload. Now, if it was to fit a quaff and follow the Ford manuals, they won't tell you none of that. Basically, you pull that out, put the bearings, new bearings on the quaff, pop it straight in. You wouldn't do nothing with preload of the bearings. So it's not to be confused with preload of a diff. That's different. If you want to know what the preload of the diff is, go back and watch my previous video where I took the diff apart. That's in plate diff. This is preload of the bearings on the diff. So what that means is, when the two halves of the casings are put together and close onto that bearing, there has got to be a specific measurement of pressure or squish, squeeze, on that bearing. If there is no squish, you're going to weigh your bearings out. If you've got too much pressure on it, you're going to weigh your bearings out too quick. So there is a slight tolerance, but the forward measurement is quite easy for me to say it's quite specific it's 0 0.14 millimeters so it's quite tricky how you get to that measurement now this is where these shims come in i was telling about earlier so down in there is what they call a bearing race let me get you one right so this is the bearing race this is the brand new one as you can see it's tapered and that would then sit over that inside there that's pressed in there just behind that, the inner bit you can see, is one of these shims. Now, let me find somewhere to put this. The forward size of shim in there, I've been assured, is 0 0.5 mil. Now, I want to give a big thank you to Matthew Peterson, Autocross Fiesta. He's in America. He done a diff, put some of the information on Instagram. I also messaged him, and he's given me the Ford manual and a lot of information to help me along the way. So, I'll link him up on Instagram. Give him a follow. He put some great Fiesta content on. So, yes, that shim is a 0 0.5. So, my plan was, I went to Ford's. I didn't want to be delayed doing this, and I bought a couple of shims, as you can see. I wanted a 0 0.3, a 0 0.1, and a 0 0.6. Now, if you add that with a 0 0.5 that's in there, that gives me very... I could have done every set in from 0.3 up to about 1.2, 1.3 mil with a combination of them shims. But Ford couldn't get a 0.1, so I'm back order. So I've only got a 0.3, 0.1, and 
and a 0.6. So we're hoping that when I come to do the measurements, that we will need one of them three, either three, five, or a six. If we needed something bizarre like an eight, I could probably do that with a combination. Um, but the chances are it's going to fall between three and six or seven. So what got me thinking is, I thought, what is the preload that's on this now? So we're going to try. I'm going to try and come up with a, an idea of how we can take a measurement of that without removing the race. Because what you normally do is, you pull that race out. You remove the shim, put everything back together. So as you can imagine, that'll give you a bit of a slop on your diff. And then you put a DTI gauge on and you measure that movement. It's very fine uh, measurements. And that's how you work out where your preload is. We'll get to that later. If it turns out that that shim that's in there now will suit my purposes, I don't need to remove the races. I'm not going to go through the arsenal of getting them out because they can be tricky. Same on that side. If I can reuse them, it'd save me a bit of work. I could just plonk it straight in as most do. But I'm not going to take that chance without testing first. So, as I say, I've got a few ideas in my head of how I think I can try and take a measurement without pulling the races out. So, I'm going to set that up and you can follow in a minute. One thing quickly to cover before we move on, right in there is your gearbox magnet. Now this comes out and this picks up all metal fragments so all you can see on there all built up is all metal gunk there you are. it's all gunky so we'll clean all that and then we'll slot it back in right so this is what i've come up with so that we can check the float um in the standard diff so nothing's changed on the diff is still in there i'm doing this purely for my own uh, sake to see what the settings are on that so what i've done is is i've used feeler gauges you see they're all set up at one mil and i've got them spaced all the way around then clamped down so what we've done is we've created one millimeter gap all the way around so then what you do is i'll see if you can see this now take a screwdriver you push the other end of the diff It'll come up and it'll read on the dial what our play is. So this may not be as exact as what I've just done, but just to give you an idea. Let's see that. So we're up to, oh, what's that, 66 actually. Um, so, when I done it just now, I put 0 0.7 down, I just rounded it out. So... If you've got 0 0.7 mil of play, I know it was 0 0.66, but just for the sake of it, right? We'll stick with what I've got here. We know we had one mil of gap we've created, so you're left with 0.3 of a mil. So that means the squish of them bearings in the standard one was under 0.3 mil preload. So the factory spec preload is 0 0.14, so it was over, over preloaded really. So that's good because that tells us we got a bit more tolerance than the exact 0 0.14 if you've got sometimes you have to round up in um shim size so uh well we'll get to that later but that that's interesting that is interesting but i mean what i'm going to do now pull all this apart and then we're going to start getting ready for to measure preload on the cas diff Right, so they're all back apart. I'm going to take this diff out now. We've got to then take the main ring gear off and swap that onto the CAS. So let's get this out here. Right, so see that will get in the way. So I think from what I've seen online, we can, from the, yep, we can get them out just like that. So the one thing we're going to do as well, now I've got it open, is we'll knock the seals out. Oops, we'll knock the seals out at the inside there on that one because we've got only ones to go in so as a pass easier now we can just get at them and get them out all right so bolts are out of the old diff that's ready to come off and you know what lot someone commented before what well, i think if you have commented about bolt your vice down because my vice to usually move right it's reasonably solid now the reason it to move around a lot is because it's uh i can extend it i can pull it out so i've got to tighten these bolts here on that arm 
and most of the time when it's extended out I don't bother tightening them so that's where the vice wobbles so it can be solid I mean it's not as solid as if it was moved to that but anyway just thought I'd answer that because I get so many questions there you are that's that off so you're gonna get the cars now and get it uh, put on there Right, so now it's the case, put that in the vice, torque them to spec. Right, so the specs for torque of this is 50 newton meters. You go in a cross star pattern, and after you've done that, it's uh, 90 degrees. So I'm going to spare you that because there's so much in this video. I'll just get that done. You know what it's like to see a boat, boat being torqued, so you don't need to see that. So, right, I'll show you me uh, doing 90 degrees on one of the boats because I know this is what a lot of people struggle with because. I haven't got a vice decent enough to hold this, so I'll show you for one of the boats are on this one. I'm marking them as I go. We do want this one to do 90 degrees. Now, I know before you say it, I haven't got a breaker bar. I use a big ratchet and I put an extension on it. So don't worry about commenting. I know what I'm doing. If I break it, I break it. Right, so here we go. See how we can do 90 degrees. <sighs> Easy. Right, so there it is, in all its glory. What I'm going to do now is go and get the other half of the case, put it on, and we'll shim it up, and we'll see what the specs are on that. Hopefully, I can use a standard shim and not have to take the races out, so there's only one way to find out. All set up with the cars in. I've done exactly the same again. One mil on the feeler gauges to give us one mil of gap, and then we go and measure what our float is so i've already done it i know the results but i'm going to show you so push him up he's about 53 there now these are the measurements i add you rotate it as well you mark three points so if you can see in there i've got three black dots on the on the defense and you rotate it so i have 0 0.55 0 0.53 0 0.55 so what that means is if you close Remove them feeler gauges, drop it down a mil, you end up with 0.5, uh, 0.45 preload, which is too much. It's too much. Um, so it means we've got to get a race out and change the shim. So if that shim is right, then that's a 0 0.5. The smallest I've got would be a 0 0.3. So a 0 0.3 would take it down to I would not I would take it down to 0 0.25 so we could live with that I wouldn't I won't qualm by that but what I'm gonna have to do now is set about stripping that out then we'll have to redo all of this test then again so yeah so let's get on with it is it right with this being such a complicated video complex in the amount of information that's in there i thought well i've got this point in the editing we're up to like 18 minutes or something so i thought i split it into two parts we'll end here now for part one and we'll pick up in part two so for this part of it thank you very much for watching and uh please watch the second part we've got the clutch to do we've got to finish off the cars fit in and get it in the car so please stick around thanks for watching anyway i'll see you on the next one cheers and bye